Hi guys, welcome to Off the 10th. My name is Chris and today is Halloween. That's right, today is Halloween and I'm excited to try this beer uh, from a brewery outside of the Niagara region. That's right, we are heading up to Toronto today to pick up that pickup. I already got it. I ordered it. Took a day to get it. It was awesome. Uh, I picked up this beer or got this beer delivered. Today we are taking a look at, from Bellwoods Brewing, we are taking a look at the Bring Out Your Dead. The 2020 edition of this beer. I'm excited to try this one. Last year's was awesome. Thanks Greg for uh, hooking me up last year with this beer. Um, and speaking of Greg, I just watched his dual review. I think he did the 2017 and the 2020, did a comparison. Uh, he rated, I believe, the 2020 a little bit higher than the 2017, saying that the 2017 was prime, uh, past its prime. I'm blabbing on, whatever. I want to get into this beer. I'm excited. Uh, where's my opener? Right here. We're going to open this up and we're going to try it. Oh, so excited. All right. Now, normally I would have already have told you what this beer is all about. I just wanted to open it, let it breathe for a second. And now I'm going to tell you what it is. All right. It's an Imperial Stout that has been aged for 16 months in cognac barrels. Uh, this one is coming in at 11.7% alcohol by volume. It's in a 500 milliliter bottle and it is expensive. This was $14 and change or maybe even just $14 straight up from Bellwoods. I ordered four of them, $10 for shipping. It, was, it came the next day, which is awesome. So for four beers with the taxes, $74. It's expensive, I know, but you know what? I love this beer so much last year. I had to get myself my own order in before it was sold out. So anyway, let's pour it. All right, she's pouring. Ooh, she's pouring like chocolate, and that was a really, really bad pour. What's wrong with me? It's like I used to be a bartender. All right, so now that I've made a mess everywhere, a little bit of a cheat there. Okay, let's see how it poured. Oh my God, the head on this beer is a dark, dark mocha colored head on this one. Looks fantastic. Poured off with a one finger head. I tried to pour a little bit more aggressively than normal. Didn't really pour down the middle of the glass until the very end, as you saw, but yeah, it is dark. You cannot see any light or anything through this. It's coming off black because it is black. It's a dark Imperial Stout. Looks fantastic. Let's take a nose. Oh, oh my God. It's a chocolate bomb. It smells sweet. Greg was saying this one is sweeter than normal. I can I know where he's talking about now. This is this is really sweet on the nose. I got a chocolate note. A lot of raisin on this one too. Some dates, figs, all kinds of those dried up fruits. Oh my god, this smells so fucking good. Alright, you know what guys? I can't wait to try this. Cheers. Let's give this one a shot. And make some noise while I'm doing it, because the tiles below me are a little bit wonky. I don't even think I had to let that thing breathe. All right, right away, I'm going to tell you, or out the hop, 11.7% alcohol. If you're not used to this, you're going to pick up some burn. But because my palate has been so accustomed to all these high alcohol content beers, I'm getting no booziness from this one at all. A little bit of a chest warming, but on the initial sip, doesn't burn like you would be doing like a shot of whatever vodka or whatever you're going to get that alcohol burn. Not getting this one at all on the, uh, on the sip. Oh, and by the way, this beer has been out all day. This is definitely at room temperature. It's freaking, oh, it's so good. Okay, let's talk about the mouthfeel on this one. Full body, definitely on this one. This one is thick, it's syrupy. It's giving me the, the sticky lips, just like I thought it would. Fuck, you know what? I'm so glad I picked up four bottles of these, and I'm very tempted to order some more, but... And get pricey, like I said, you know what I mean? Like $14 a bottle. That's killer. All right, on the taste. It is sweet, but not as sweet as I thought when after I watched Greg's uh, little dual review on this one. I thought this was going to be super, super sweet, but it's not. There is a little bit of a sweetness on this one. You're getting the chocolate big time through this one. Dessert beer, he called it. Yeah, I can see that. It is, it is kind of desserty, but it's not overly sweet. This, for me, 
is a perfect Imperial Stout. If I was scoring this one, I said the word perfect. Yeah, it's probably going to be really up there on the score. Might even untap this one. Most likely I will. Um, you're getting that chocolate note. You're getting that fig. You're getting the raisins in there. But you're getting more of that. I want to say a little bit of a coffee note, but not as much as the chocolate on this one. And wow, it's giving me a good carbonation on this one, surprisingly. But yeah, I don't even know where to go anymore on this one. This is just so good. Oh, wow. Now, this being 2020, this has potential of being beer of the year for me, uh, for especially for Imperial Stouts. This is probably the best Imperial Stout I've had this year, for sure. Anyway, guys, I'm done with my own opinion on this one. It's 11 and it's 11.7 percent. I gotta take my time with this one. I gotta take us a couple uh, to take us. I gotta take us a couple pictures and whatever, and then uh, finish this one off. Really slowly, I don't have very much left in this because it is only a 500 ml bottle. I got a huge sniff or two pouring it. But anyway, I'm done blabbing out on this one. Anyway, my Halloween beer is done. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, if you like the video, click the like down below. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace out. Mm-hmm.